Your Excellency, Honourable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, doom, gloom, pain and castigation are just a few of the words that have been used this morning to describe the state of the mining sector, other than, of course, the very upbeat message about Zambia. And against that backdrop, it is my distinct pleasure and privilege to tell you a little bit in the next few minutes about a much brighter and happier story involving gemstone mining in Zambia. For those of you that have not come across gem fields, just very briefly, do we happen to have a laser pointer? While that hopefully makes its way up here, uh, Gemfields PLC is a London listed company, listed on AIM. Because there is so much darkness surrounding the mining sector at the moment, and thanks to our share price having increased more than 20 fold since the financial crisis, we are now the 18th largest listed mining company on the London Stock Exchange and number two on the AIM market, something which is quite remarkable. The pertinent point that I wanted to show you here was that inside of Zambia, Gemfields PLC owns 50% of the Kariba Amethyst mine, alongside Dr. Kasolo, the CEO of ZCCMIH, and we also own 75% of the Kardium Emerald mine, alongside the government of the Republic of Zambia. We're going to focus this morning on Kardium. Talk is very cheap when people start bandying around words like transparency, communication, and collaboration, and everybody says it's great ideas, and we should do this, and we should do that. But I'm going to share with you what happens when you get that formula right. Two years ago, we sponsored the first ever Zambian Emerald Summit, never been done before in the sector, to bring all the competitors together, get all the issues on the table, and for the first time ever to publish some of the figures behind what is typically a very private and clandestine industry. Most colored gemstone mines are hand to mouth and very small, but this photograph depicts very nicely the size of the Cardium Emerald Mine with one of our employees sitting at the tip of the red arrow. Cardium is by far and away the number one colored gemstone mine in the world. We move approximately 1.3 or 1.4 million tons of rock every month, unheard of in this industry. And a little bit like uh, Mr. Albanese's example of a big dump truck with a lot of ore in it, anyone typically believes that if you have an emerald license, you live a life of Lamborghinis and private jets. That is simply not the case. In order to get one gram of emeralds, we have to move five million grams of rock. So if you assume that London's population is made up of 15 million people, there are only three that matter to you. A very difficult business. On the subject of transparency, we publish every single statistic that we can about our production. We do the same for our sales. All of the historic sales that we've held to date, number of companies, price per carat, our production costs, it is all on the, in the public domain and available on our website. In response to a request from our partners in government, we have, since April of 2013, run our auctions only within Zambia rather than selling them abroad. What has that approach done? This black arrow, I apologize for the overload of graphs here, and I realize this, some of them are probably a little bit small for you, but. This black arrow shows you the point at which Cardium got involved, correction, where Gemfields got involved in the Cardium Emerald Mine. And you will see that revenues for the Cardium Emerald Mine have gone from approximately $9 million up to $88 million in the last completed financial year. Ditto, the net profits of the business have gone from fairly serious loss-making positions to net profits of $23 million, the annual royalties contributed to state coffers have gone from about half a million dollars up tenfold to approximately 5.3 million. And an entity which had never paid corporation tax started doing so a few years ago with a total contribution in the last financial year of 25 million US dollars. Employment levels at Cardium have gone from 400 people up to approximately 700 people. And our annual production has gone from circa 10 million carats 
to approximately 25 million carats. This graph, which is a little tricky for you to see, shows the auction prices that we have received on the international market. The darker lines are the lower grade auctions and the green ones are the higher grade auctions. The message here is that prices are up approximately tenfold against the backdrop of our production going up two and a half fold. In other words, the increase in revenue is not created only by an increase in the volumes produced. Something else is going on. We were also fortunate enough for the first time in the history of the emerald sector to be able to pay a dividend in the last financial year. And Cardium's total contribution to government coffers was 35 million US dollars when you take into account the dividends, the mineral royalties, and the corporation tax. Here are two headline takeaways from what was a very good year for Cardium. 40% of our revenue went to government. So if you add up the corporation tax, the dividend, and the royalty, 40% of revenue went to government, which I think is a truly remarkable achievement. If you do a similar calculation based on our taxable profit, we obviously pay the 30% corporation tax. Because the operation is touch wood, nice and profitable, we also get the first 15% variable profits tax. And if you then add the mineral royalty tax, our effective tax rate, based on our, profit, uh, our, our tax calculation, taxable profit, is 60%. Six zero percent. So a tremendous contribution being made to state coffers. What's happening with the prices and why are they going up so dramatically? One of those is that we have been able to do a lot of local value addition. Now typically people think that involves cutting and polishing. But in actual fact where we spend most of our time is in making sure that we get the cleaning, the grading, and the sorting of the gemstones absolutely right. All of this work is done inside of Zambia and you have a quick depiction here of just how complicated that process is for us. In the middle of this photograph stands an idiot. <laughs> Regrettably, the idiot is me. And as is so often the case, we felt that cutting and polishing was the best way for us to add value to our gemstones. And in 2008, we set up a facility in Jaipur in India, which has some of the world's best cutters and polishers, highly experienced people, and we started cutting and polishing. And this photograph, in my left hand, I'm holding the first ever cut and polished gemstone that came out of this facility. 12 months later, we shut this facility down. We wrote off a couple of million dollars, and that investment is entirely on my head. It was my fault. Today, Gemfields does not engage in cutting and polishing. We specialize in selling the very carefully processed rough gemstones at auction because we learned three fundamental rules. Number one, the margins in cutting and polishing are not exactly what people think they are. Number two, rather than dealing with an audience of about 50 companies, which is what we do when we sell the rough, you suddenly in a world where you have to sell to thousands of different companies, and it becomes logistically much more complicated to do that. Third and finally, when you sell rough gemstones, you get paid in cash before you ship the gemstones, which is a lovely business to be in. If you sell cut and polished gemstones, very often you have to give credit terms, 90 days, 180 days, sometimes 12 months, or indeed, you give out the gemstones on a sale or return basis. And that is simply not a business that we want to be involved in. That is demonstrated very effectively by a Bain study on the diamond sector, which shows where the biggest margins are made in the diamond business, which is sort of analogous to colored gemstones. But it shows us that on the production and mining side, the margins are highest. And the next highest bit sits out on the retail side. However, the cutting and polishing has fairly low margins of approximately 2 to 5%. And I wish dearly that I had looked at this graph before we opened up in Jaipur. 
In February of this year, we were able to further put funds into our social responsibility projects in Zambia. We announced a $1 million investment, again, relatively small compared to some of the copper guys, but unheard of in the colored gemstone sector, where we are building the Virgin Secondary School in Chapula, and in addition to that, expanding an existing clinic at Nkana Village. And we have now also branched out into conservation, where we are presently sponsoring the operating costs for an anti-rhino poaching vehicle. With that, I thank you for your time and attention.